Hey there, Mike again. Um, gonna do a short video today on air compressors and uh, PSI versus CFM. The pounds per square inch, the pressure of that air coming out, and the cubic feet per minute, the volume, how much air is actually coming out. Because the problem is, a lot of people don't understand it, and then they don't set up their tools right, and they don't set up the compressor right, and then they complain that they can't get the job done. Um, you've got some tools like an impact wrench. The one I have, it can use up to six cubic feet per minute. And my compressor can't put out six cubic feet per minute. Even with high flows, my compressor does four cubic feet per minute at 90 PSI. Um, even with high flows, I might get that up to 4.5. Even with my auxiliary five gallon tank, I might get it up to five CFM. But, you know, because that uh, impact wrench wants so much more air and it can't get it, uh, it really loses a lot of uh, PSIs and people don't understand. Uh, that tool is going to grab whatever it can grab. Now, if the tool like my plasma cutter only needs like one and a half CFMs, then when it's being used, that the PSI doesn't drop much. Uh, if you had something like a, a half a CFM, you know, for a small little uh, airbrush or something like that uh it doesn't really care because uh that psi is never going to change or even things that use a lot of pressure like a brad or nail gun or a roofing gun or 16 18 gauge stuff like those uh, nail guns the thing is with those those are just really quick short bursts so it can get all the air it needs at one time uh but an impact wrench die grinders uh big plasma cutters, things like that, that uh, sand blasters, they suck air and they suck it a lot and they, for a longer duration of time. So when that's happening, the PSIs go down because they're inversely proportionate. Uh, PSI and CFM, the more air you use, as that CFM goes up, the PSI comes down. And that's why you have your static PSI when you first uh, set your regulator, say 100 PSI. But as soon as you pull the trigger on the gun or whatever tool you're using, you see it dropping down to 80 or 90, that's your working pressure and that's what you need to work on. So um, that's what this uh, video is gonna be about. I'm going to uh, demonstrate it here all for you in a second, but I just wanted you to understand that uh, if you don't use a lot of CFMs, that PSI doesn't come down that much. But you get that impact wrench and stuff, and it sucks a lot of air. Well, that PSI is going down. And if you don't set that right, your gun's not going to, you know, the tool you're using, in my case, this impact gun, impact wrench, is not going to be at its max. So, you know, mine can, it advertises 1,200 foot-pounds of breakaway torque. And I've seen a lot of people that, yeah, I love this tool, but then I've seen so many reviews where people said, this thing doesn't get anywhere near 1,200 foot-pounds. Well, no shit. That's because you're not giving it a, at six. You're not giving it six CFM of air at 90 psi. Most air compressors, unless you've got a 60, 80 gallon that can do 11 CFMs and stuff like that, with half inch piping and half inch hoses and stuff like that, you're not going to get anywhere close to that. Um, most people's compressors, the average person, maybe they have a 30 gallon or less. Yeah, it can do the 90, it can do 135, it can do 175 PSI. But the CFM is what's going to dictate that. Like I said, there's a lot of tools. It doesn't matter. You don't care because it doesn't you know, do that. But even with my 4 to 5 CFM, depending on how I have it connected, uh, my impact wrench, okay, it's not 1,200, it's, but it's going to still be in that 4 to 500 foot-pounds. So that means it can still do all the jobs I need it to do. But if I was working on like tractor trailers, you know, uh, tractors, you know, and stuff like that, where I have some mega bolts and stuff like that, and uh, we're talking in the hundreds and hundreds of foot pounds, I might need a bigger compressor. I might need something that can give me that full six CFM so I can get up to seven, 800 foot pounds. But uh, for average person, no. But it is important that you know how to set it up. So, um, Definitely, uh, before I go show you how this is all set up and demonstrate the differences, if you can subscribe to the channel, great. Uh, 
in the description, I will have another link to a video I just did on uh, adding an auxiliary tank, because uh, that auxiliary tank will also help with, you, with your air pressure too. It'll give you more volume, therefore you'll be able to, your air pressure won't drop as much. But, uh, so, you know, check out that video and I have a lot of other videos on welders and plasma cutters and tools and working on cars. It's a DIY channel, I have all sorts of stuff in there. So if you wanna subscribe, that's great. Um, but let me uh, set this up for you to demonstrate the differences. I'll catch you in a second. So the first thing I wanted to show you was I made this little T connection with uh, a gauge on it. Cause I wanted to show you right now that I have my regulator is set for about 100 PSI, right on the dot, according to it. And this is showing just a pubic hair higher, like 102, 103. So they're pretty much the same. Uh, I just wanted to show you that the gauges I'm using show the same right amount of pressure. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna go through all the hoses yet, but I'm gonna go with a short hose and a uh, impact wrench and show you the drop. Hold on a second and we'll get that okay. in here. So I just have a short, like eight foot hose. I put that meter back on here, you know, with showing the hundred and I have my air impact wrench. And I'm gonna show you with just this short amount and I'm gonna put this close to it so that the two gauges are close. And when I pull the trigger, you're gonna see the major drop. see that this one showed about 60 psi <laughs> and this one showed about <laughs> this one showed a little bit more about 70 to 80 and i'm gonna have to let the compressor fill up again and then i'll explain exactly what was going on here now as i said earlier and most of you already know that the static ip and the working ip are different all right, the working IP goes down and you say, oh, well, I need 90 PSI. So what most people do, and we'll go ahead and they'll adjust their regulator to make sure it's 90 when it's working. So let me turn on the impact wrench, see how low it goes, and then we'll boost it up a little to hit it 90. <coughs> see, it went down to about 70 or so. So let's pump it up to there real quick. <coughs> see, there's 90, right? Everybody thinks, oh, okay, that's happy. <coughs> Mind you, this is only with a, about an eight foot hose. But remember that other gauge? See, it's showing about 115 there. It's about 115 here. And that was showing 90 when I pulled the trigger. What do I get here? <laughs> about 75. <laughs> okay, air is going out, so that's about 85 now, but. <laughs> 75. So it's about 10. PSI off and that's only with an eight foot hose so what you want is you want it to be 90 on this end which means you'd have to crank it up even more but <laughs> there's 80 but I'm gonna have to let my compressor build back up <laughs> so I'm gonna let it build back up and I'll get right now, back remember what I told you as the volume of air goes up, the PSIs come down. If it's low volume, PSIs don't change much. Instead of the impact wrench, I just put on an air hose, you know, for filling up your car tire. Nothing special, right? So I'm gonna hold these, try to hold these next to each other. Well, that's gonna be tough. Okay, they're both showing about that 120, but when I pull on an air gun, look at that, such low volume, the PSI barely changes. PSI barely even changes, because it's very low volume of air. And again, the meters are still pretty accurate. This one's a little pubic hair higher, but it's 120, and that's showing about 120. But again, almost no PSI drop. You gotta understand too that when meters are reading this, they read air from two different directions. They read it forward and back and then that's how they can come up with the working pressure. Well, 
the gauge at the end, that's going to have where the most volume is being used because it's leaving and there's nothing really coming back. It's all going straight to the gun. Where the one on your tank, the regulator, is also showing some back pressure. And that's why that one can still show about uh, 90 like we were setting it for. But this one was showing 80 on the impact wrench. And that's where people are really making their mistake. You need to be able to crank it up so that this can get to 90. Now, like I said, this only has a 4.0 uh, CFM. Up to five if I use my external tank and all these high flow connections. But that impact wrench is still going to try to grab more air than I can provide it. That's why the pressure is going to be down. So some people are gonna think, well, just turn up the air all the way. Well, yeah, for a big tool like this, you're not gonna hurt it. People say, oh, you don't wanna give it 150 PSI or whatever because you'll hurt the gun. Chances are, it's not gonna be anywhere near that. Now, mind you, I'm just doing this with an eight foot hose. I'm gonna set it up with my normal 50 foot hose that most people would have, 25 or 50 foot, and show you what happens. Okay, so now I've got this going out to my regular reel. 50 foot, I still got my gauge here, and I'm still just on the air uh, hose for filling up a tire. And you're gonna see, before with the eight foot hose, it went down about, uh, let me turn back on the air. There we go, turn that valve on. So we're sitting at about, what are we sitting at? About 110. And this is showing about 110 a pubic hair higher. And again, when I it with the eight foot hose, it only lost about one or two pounds. See, and it doesn't, it's not losing much at all. PSI, very low volume, right? So, turn off this valve for a second and drain that air. That's probably close enough. Just don't want to pop off stuff when I drop that. <clears throat> so I can hook it back up to, back up to the impact wrench that uses there. Now with 50 foot, remember before we were losing about 10 PSI on eight foot of hose, right? Turn that back on. But with this 50 foot, okay, if you notice, this is gonna show a little bit higher pressure because of the, um, it's towards the end of a 50 foot hose but watch what happens. Okay, a little bit of an issue here, just so you know. When I dropped this meter a minute ago, it doesn't go zero back out. It's kind of like stuck at around 10 PSI. So it's reading about 10 higher than normal. So when I give it back the air, and I'm showing about 105 here. I'm gonna show about 120 here. But my point on this is when we lost about 10 difference, this should be about, so whatever the regulator gauge is, this gauge would have been about 10 less with the eight foot. But now you're gonna see how much difference it really goes. <laughs> Regulator was showing 90. This was showing <laughs> Sorry about that. But the second gauge was showing about 70, which really meant about 60 because it's 10 high. So we'll get back in a second. Oh, so, sorry for that little malfunction. But yeah, that second gauge, the one that at the end of the tool that I dropped. Uh, so now it's reading like 10 or 15 high. 
but I think you saw my point. When I had the eight foot hose and we set the uh, compressor for nine, uh, so it would working pressure at 90, the gauge at the tool was only showing about 80. But when I put the 50 foot hose to like the normal and the gauge on the end, when I pull the trigger and the regulator goes down to working pressure and shows about 90, it was only showing about 60 or 70 at that 50 foot hose at the end of that. And that's the whole point of this is first of all, if you're using a normal compressor that's four CFM or less, or, and it's about 135 PSI, give or take, you're not gonna hurt that air tool by cranking that uh, regulator valve all the way up. But again, you have to, it depends on the tool. On an air impact wrench, yeah, just crank it all the way up. Now, if you have 175 uh, PSI type compressor, I recommend that you build a little T with a uh, air gauge on it that you can put at the end of the hose before it goes into the tool so you can measure, so you can get the right PSI that you need. And that's where a lot of people are having a problem. Uh, you saw on the air gun for filling up your tires, it doesn't use anything. Uh, a nail gun isn't gonna use much, it's little bursts. Uh, even a plasma cutter, if it only uses one or two CFMs, it's not gonna be a problem. But when you get into things that uh, use high volumes of air, like an impact wrench, a die grinders, uh, uh, blowing out your sprinkler systems or whatever, and you're using high volumes of air, that PSI is going to drop. You're going to, you need to turn it up and you need to turn it up a lot more than you're used to doing. Um, and that's why it's best to try to get a gauge on the end for all the other things. Now that the gauge on the regulator on the compressor is going to be accurate enough. It's going to be very close to the 90, 100, whatever it is you need to set it for. But on something that sucks air, and I mean, sucks it more than probably your compressor can use. Uh, like I said, more than a normal four to five that most compressors do. Uh, unless you've got that big 60, 80 gallon that can put out 11 CFMs uh, with half inch piping and half inch hosing and all that other stuff. Uh, you're not going to hurt that tool. Like I said, yeah, people say, well, you know, you don't want to crank up 135 PSI on your tool. You saw what happens when you pull that trigger. It may be 135 before you pull the trigger, but as soon as you pull that trigger, that volume of air is so much, it wants so much that you're down to 80. You know, if you can get to 90, great. That's where you want it to be. But unless you have that 175 PSI um, compressor that has a good CFM coming out, you're not gonna hurt anything. But again, for the smaller things, yeah, you don't want to have it at 135 if it only wants 90 or 50 or 60 and it's a paint gun or sandblasting or, you know, smaller tools. Uh, but anyway, so this was just to kind of let you know how this all works and CFM versus PSI and to give you a better understanding that just because your regulator says 90 PSI working pressure when you pull the trigger, when you look at the... Uh, gauge that's actually that I put on right at the tool, you saw that that 90 was still only about 80 or 75, okay, after 50 feet. With the eight foot, it lost about 10, 10 PSI. 90 showed 80. With 50 foot, it was now down to 75 or 70, okay? You lose a lot of pressure there when you've got that much volume of air, again, Things that don't take a lot of volume, you saw the PSIs didn't even budge. They, you know, they didn't do anything. So anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, again, uh, subscribe to my channel if you can and uh, check out my other videos. You have yourself a great day. God bless.